interviewing Golda Talib. Today is September 21st, 2008. Golda, it's very nice to meet you. Um, Thank you. Nice <laughs> meeting all of you. <laughs> um, so I'm curious about your name. What, what does it mean? Uh, I guess your first name and then your last name. Golda? I really don't know what it means. Mm -hmm. Obviously, uh, in the Jewish tradition, especially when people are Orthodox, they will usually name a child after somebody who is deceased. Mm -hmm. So I don't even know exactly who I am named after, but obviously there was such a person in our family that was related and that's who my parents named me after. <laughs> okay. Do you have any nicknames? No. <laughs> okay. I don't. <laughs> and is Talib your married name? Is that your husband's yes, name? Yes. Uh, we pronounce it Caleb, but it doesn't oh, matter. Caleb. Talib or Caleb. That's my married name, yes. What was your maiden name? Well, uh, I will pronounce it the way it was pronounced in... Uh, Polish that might be a little bit hard for you to pronounce. Schachter. Schachter? Mm -hmm. Schachter. Can you spell that? Yes, but can you give me a pen for sure. me to write it down? Because it's kind of hard for me to... This is the... That's how it was spelled in Poland. Okay. It's S Z S Z A C H T E R, and um, um, so is Schatzer pronounced it again? It's pronounced Schachter. Schachter. Of course, once I came to the United States and before I was married, I would just say Schachter. Mm -hmm. It's but in Poland it was pronounced Schachter. And it, and that was how you pronounced it since you were born. You you didn't change it. When you came to the United States? No, I did change the spelling a little mm -hmm. bit because that was too difficult for most people. Mm -hmm. So instead of S Z, I made it S H A C H T E R. I understand. Okay. Just for the purpose of ease. <laughs> right. I see. Okay. Um, so where where were you born? In a little town called Bocentin. Bocentin. Mm -hmm. Okay. In the eastern part of Poland? That was like more or less uh, in the central part of Poland. Okay. How was that? Uh, how, so you're Polish? You're. Well, I'm um, Jewish, you're, of you're course. Jewish, but, of course. Okay. Right. But born in Poland. Okay. Um, did you have any brothers or sisters? I know that. I had actually uh, two brothers, mm -hmm. and I still have two sisters. Uh, my two sisters survived the Holocaust, my two brothers did not. Okay. And um, your parents lived there with you, and how, how was growing up there? I'm sorry, what did you say about my parents? Well, first... First, I'll say, were your siblings older than you or yes, younger? Yes, I was the youngest of five. Okay, the youngest mm -hmm. of five. Mm -hmm. How was that? <laughs> well, I had a wonderful childhood before the war mm -hmm. uh, started. Uh, my father was a fairly well-to-do man. He operated a flour mill. A flour mill? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we were fairly well to do. We lived in this little town uh, which was very close from uh, some beautiful farms and a forest, just walking oh, really? distance. So we really had a very nice time, especially in the summer. Uh -huh. uh, but even in the winter, where it constantly snowed in Poland and there was always snow and ice in the streets uh -huh. so that we could go on sleds and uh, oh that's fun or ice skating or ice skating i didn't ice skate my uh, older sisters though did and uh, 
since my father owned a business, he had a uh, he had horses. He had horses. He had horses, and one of those buggies were uh, we could go. Oh, like, that's so and, much and, fun! And a sled. He would take us all in this uh, um, buggy and uh, sleigh ride. Put on some like like a sleigh ride, and put on some bells and. Uh, he would get some of my cousins, of whom I had many, and we would all just have a grand time, <laughs> summer or winter. Did you ride at all? Did you ride horses at no. all? No, I did not. Okay. And in terms of holidays, um, did you guys have a Shabbat dinner every Friday evening? Yes, my parents were uh, Orthodox and uh, uh, Shabbat was celebrated. Mm -hmm. So, of course, uh, my father and brothers were all, always went to the synagogue mm -hmm. on the Shabbat. And, of course, all the Jewish holidays were celebrated. Do you have any specific memory about one Shabbat dinner in particular that you remember? Or the kinds of food you ate and the kind of feeling you had? Well, I uh, do remember that, uh, like I said, they went uh, to synagogue every Shabbat and very often my father would bring home some guests mm -hmm. for the Shabbat dinner. And uh, the menu was kind of more or less uh, routine for Shabbat. <laughs> Some of it, I don't even know if you know what it is. <laughs> I might. It was sort of like a stew called, in Yiddish, we called it a chont. It was <laughs> something that really was in the oven all night. <laughs> uh, like downstairs of us, we had a bakery. So my mother would prepare that and take it down to the bakery and that's where it was cooking all night. Right. Although I understand that oven would be turned off, but hot enough all night for it to bake. And then there was uh, chicken soup and always fish, what we call gefilte fish. I love, <laughs> I love gefilte fish. And uh, generally some dessert like apple pie, but that was sort of more or less a, the menu was sort of routine for Shabbat. Did you like that stew? Yes, I did, yes. <laughs> I was a poor eater as a child, but I liked it. Uh-huh. Do you have any other holidays? What was your favorite Jewish holiday, would what you say? What was my favorite, favorite Jewish holiday? Well, I kind of like them all in a way because the house was very festive mm -hmm. and usually there was so much preparation for the holidays and some excitement and I sort of, not that I really helped, but I sort of felt that excitement. Mm -hmm. how, was, how was your part in helping? Like what? I, um... I didn't really help a lot since I was one of the youngest. Mm -hmm. I mean, the youngest child. But especially, I should say, though, for sukkos, my uh, sisters would decorate the sukkah, and there I would sometimes go in and help decorate it. We would cut out different papers and make all kinds of creations, <laughs> like little baskets, and uh, put candy into it and other uh, things, and hang it up. So, it was exciting. <laughs> <laughs> and was the, was the sukkah at your home? Um, what, what is the sukkah? What is a sukkah? Yeah, I'm not familiar. Oh, it's kind of like a... a a booth, uh, like a temporary sort of booth where you live, uh, the holiday lasts about eight days. Uh, there are some intermediate days, of course, 
but uh, more or less you eat in that sukkah for eight days. You've never seen anyone in Baltimore put one up. It's sort of like a temporary hut. Okay. <laughs> so you would put them up at your home or at your shul? Uh, no, usually people put it up, let's say, in their backyard, if you have the space. Mm -hmm. Did you help um, cook at all when you were younger? Uh, only to the degree that occasionally my mother would send me, uh, let's say, to the uh, grocery store. Of course, uh, the city was such a little city that if, let's say, she missed something, <clears throat> so it wouldn't be a matter that we had to drive for it. Mm -hmm. I would go down and maybe uh, a block or so away, they were all these grocery stores. Mm -hmm. And uh, since the little city was that little, so if I came in, they knew me, and uh, I would just say my mother wants such and such. I didn't even have to pay for it because my mother went in at a later date and paid for it. That's very nice. I mean, life was completely different, of course. Mm -hmm. And that was so because you knew everyone in your town and it was... We knew everyone in the town mm -hmm. and everyone knew us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and... Uh, of course, there were no uh, big stores like here, for example, like when I go to Giant. These were just little grocery stores. Right. So, uh, and everything was uh, right there. Mm -hmm. I mean, I could see exactly what I wanted. Right. Because the arrangement in the store, everything was sort of like a huge sex. And uh, let's say if I would want a pound of, let's say, sugar or so, they would just take it out of this huge sack, uh, uh, weigh it, give it to me, mm -hmm. and I went home. <laughs> That's very nice. So tell me a little more about your mother. What was she like? She oh. Okay. Well, before we get there, I guess, in your town, was everyone was everyone Jewish in the town you grew up in? No, absolutely not. But um, the section where the Jews lived, uh, we generally lived, they were like two plazas mm -hmm. in that little city uh, where I lived. And Jews generally lived uh, in the lower and upper plaza. Okay. And there were, of course, some Gentiles around, but uh, the Jewish stores were like generally uh, concentrated in one place. Generally, Jewish people they were right more concentrated in these two places. Right. But of course, they were Gentiles. In fact, uh, let's say the public school. I only managed to go to uh, the first grade. And uh, that was for Jews and uh, Gentiles. So you went to school with people who weren't Jewish as well? Oh, of course. Yeah. Absolutely. Schools were uh, for Gen the public schools right. were for Jews and Gentiles. But what? I didn't even finish first grade because once the Germans entered, we were not allowed to go to school. Jewish children were not allowed to go to school. Mm. Mm. Wow. How did... How did that feel for you being a young child and, I mean, do you remember going to first grade and... Oh yes, I <sighs> definitely remember going to first grade. How did it feel? And I definitely remember that uh, one day my teacher, whose name I even remember, announced that starting tomorrow... Oh, what's the name of your teacher? Krogulcova. <laughs> That's a great name. <laughs> okay. Now 
announce that uh, starting tomorrow, no Jewish child is wow. allowed to come to school. And, uh, well, by that time, uh, the Germans had already been in town for quite a while, so I understood very well what was going on. You did? Oh, yes. Children under these conditions grow up very fast. Mm -hmm. Of course. And did your parents have any knowledge of what was going on in, in Germany? No, I was born in Poland. Right, Poland. but did they have any... Um, uh, uh, you mean knowledge of what was going on before that... Before the war started? In, in Germany. Yes, my father had knowledge of it because he used to travel and also, you know, he listened uh, uh, to the radio mm -hmm. and read some newspapers. And in fact, he would have been in favor of... Uh, leaving uh, Poland even shortly before the war he in fact wanted to run to Russia mm. but somehow my mother was against it and I guess since he wasn't really sure what would happen though he could foresee a lot of it but I guess he wasn't really sure and so he listened to her What was uh, her reasoning for wanting to stay? For Wanting to stay? For wanting to stay, well, first of all, she had brothers and sisters in that little town. And she also knew that uh, life in Russia would be very hard. Mm -hmm. That we wouldn't have the uh, conveniences that we had where we were living. And somehow she didn't believe what was coming. That would be that it would be as bad as it really turned out to be. Obviously, had she known that, <laughs> we would have gladly gone. Right. But uh, somehow she couldn't foresee it. <laughs> what was your relationship like with your mother? Well, actually, all the children had a good, had a very good relationship with our mother. And also I had a very good relationship with my father mm -hmm. and, all my, and, and all my siblings. <clears throat> parents were generally a little bit more strict with children <laughs> than parents are, are here, <laughs> shall we say. Uh, <laughs> uh, parents here are a little bit uh, permissive, more than a little bit in my opinion. <laughs> So consequently, children in Poland, uh, they listened more to parents. And that does not mean that parents were mean. They were not mean at all. In fact, my parents were very nice to us. Mm -hmm. But we kind of knew it was sort of almost like an unspoken law that when my parents said something, that we it just was. listened. <laughs> right. Um, can you give me an example of uh, maybe something, yeah. okay. something that you did or that, that where you, you, your parents, where it was easy for you to listen to your parents and or a, a great memory you have doing things with your family? Well, uh, memories. Uh, first of all, I should tell you that... Uh, even though I described uh, how pleasant it was to live in my little town, nevertheless, every summer, my mother, who had uh, quite a bit of arthritis, mm. would go to a place called Krynica. Krynica? Krynica. Mm -hmm. it, it was a place where she could take certain beds uh, that would help her condition, and since I was the youngest, child. She, I guess she was afraid to leave me, so I would always go with her for six weeks. Wow. And then when we came back, by that time my father had usually uh, rented a place somewhere like in the outskirts. Uh, specifically, I remember a place called Sochedniuf. It was sort of like a white 
little house in the forest mm. where by that time when my mother and I came back all the children and my father would be there mm. so we came straight back to that place okay and that's a beautiful memory because it was in the forest and uh, my mother had a lot of time for us mm -hmm. we would uh, go visit a lot of places and uh, be in the forest a lot and uh, play ball, ride bicycles mm -hmm. and, uh, some of my cousins were also there they would come out so it was just a beautiful uh, happy time where, where would you go when you were there? you said you'd go places? well, usually there would be like uh, swimming there mm -hmm. and the surroundings were very nice so there was a lot of walking and the older children rode bikes I actually didn't mm. ride a bike yet right so uh, that's what we did <laughs> <laughs> and they played games and uh, tell me a little bit more about your cousins well actually I had a lot of cousins because my mother was one of nine mm -hmm. children wow. and some of her sisters and brothers were married and had children so that I had a lot of cousins my father was the only child mm. so uh, there were no uncles or cousins right. on that side but from my mother's side and was there your were mother a lot of cousins was she from Poland as well did she yes. grew up in Poland yes okay and your father also yes mm -hmm. and do you uh, did you know your grandparents when you were young well, uh, my mother's father, yes, I knew him very well. And of course, we used to visit there very often. But he had no wife. His wife had passed away mm -hmm. long before uh, I was born. Mm -hmm. But in fact, uh, since he had so many children, so his place, in fact, was sort of like a gathering place, all the children, uh, especially in the summer, those that lived out of town, mm -hmm. there were uh, my mother's two sisters that mm -hmm. did not live in the same town as we did, but very close in towns nearby, so they used to come in the summer and everyone just gathered in my grandfather's house. That's wonderful. <laughs> I mean, all the aunts and all my cousins, very often we all met over there. Mm -hmm. And of course, many of my cousins very often slept in our house. Mm -hmm. So you had a very close relationship to your whole family. Yes, you guys were a, a community. very close relationship to the whole family. And where did your grandfather live? Where was his house? Well, uh, of course in the same town, mm -hmm. but it was like across the street from ours. Mm -hmm. Let's see, if this is the plaza, we lived here mm -hmm. and across mm -hmm. was where my grandfather lived and that flour mill that I mentioned mm -hmm. that Can my... You a uh, pardon me? Can you draw a picture? Not really. I'm very poor at that, but it's possible that there is something in that book. Okay. Uh, that flour mill that I mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, actually that was owned between my father and grandfather. Okay. My father owned 50% of it and my grandfather owned 50% of it, I believe. Did you supply flour to your whole community? Yes. Wow. They did. So, in fact, it was the only flour mill in town, hmm. as far as I can remember. And they were hard working, and, and they, did they work there every day, your father and your father? Uh, the mill, as far as I remember, was open every day, but of course there were a lot of hired workers there. Mm -hmm. it, wasn't, it wasn't only my father that right. uh, 
work there. My grandfather did not work there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but some of my, one of my uncles did. Okay. Very cool. It was sort of, uh, he worked actually not exactly in the flour mill. There was sort of like a separate part to the mill, I guess, where everything was controlled, how the mill uh, ran all the machinery, and he worked in that, in that part, part of it. Right. Did you go and visit the mill? Do you remember that when you were yes, younger? I definitely did. What I was that like? That once, for example, my father uh, took me there, and since uh, there was a lot of um, some big wheels and machinery, mm -hmm. I remember specifically that he hid <laughs> from me. He sort of had me look for him, <laughs> sort of try to scare me a little bit, but then he would jump out and <laughs> here I am. <laughs> so yes, occasionally I used to go to visit in addition to the fact the mill, uh, it was sort of situated in a place, there was a lot of land there, and, uh, the end of, and at the end of it was like a wooden gate, and once you would walk out of that gate, you were uh, like in the village, in oh. some farm places, so instead of going, let's say, around the city a little bit uh -huh. to get to those farm places. I would usually go in across the street to this mill and just open the gate and <laughs> just be exactly where I wanted to be. There were meadows and farms and a lot of flowers, a lot of mm. things growing. And I was old enough and free enough that sometimes I would just go there by myself. Other times, especially on a Saturday, when my mother and father had more time, we would go together, and of course then we would go a lot further out. Right, right. And do you remember the smells of the mill? And Oh yes. <laughs> That's of course impossible to describe, but yes, I do remember it quite well. Uh-huh. <laughs> And you felt, I guess you felt like you had a sense of independence because even though you were young, the town was safe enough that you could go around by yourself? Yes, I did feel a sense of independence and my parents did not hesitate or, or, or forbid me to go by myself. They knew, they knew where I was going. But yes, I should mention that there was some anti-Semitism Mm. However, uh, if a child went during the day, it was completely safe. Mm -hmm. That is to say, until the war started, then things changed drastically. What was it like at night? You mean... Uh, you said during the day you felt safe to go by well, yourself? even at night it was safe, but there were... <coughs> Periods, especially let's say during a Christian holiday, when there would be more anti-Semitism. <coughs> Excuse me. But of course, once the war started, anti-Semitism increased. I mean, it's, so it it's it almost uh, doesn't feel like it's in comparison at all. It, it's all right. It just increased so much. I mean, it's almost. How to believe what happened? Do you do you remember anything in school? Any did you experience any form of? Well, only once I remember, <clears throat> and this was before the war. I used to go to school. That was in the winter time, and generally, children wore like a sort of like a navy, or maybe it was black sort of like um, apron like with sleeves mm -hmm. and a white collar. Now for some or other reason I didn't have to wear that. I don't know why I wore like a pretty dress and like a white sort of mm -hmm. organza 
apron. But this was in the winter time, and I wore like a fur coat and a hat and a sort of a bow on my hair. And at one time, a girl just pulled off my hat hmm. and sort of said something derogatory. I don't even remember what she said. It was definitely an anti-Semitic act. Mm -hmm. And I repeated that to the principal of the school. Mm. And somehow, I don't know what they did to her, but she was reprimanded for mm. it. Mm -hmm. was, was the principal of your school Jewish? No, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. Mm. And, and at a very young age, you remember that? Which is, oh, yes, because yeah. it was something uh, that, that, that had happened to me only once. I have to say, as a child, this is the only time that I experienced any anti-Semitism. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Adults, it was different uh, for adults, because occasionally an incident here and there would happen. Right. And tell me a little bit more about what it was like to go to school when you were younger. To be in school? Yeah. Well, actually it was uh, very pleasant mm -hmm. until the war started. I remember even what we tried to learn. I even remember a little poem. <laughs> Say but, it, please. But it's Polish. That's okay. fine. We'd love to hear it. Yes. It sounds like this. Raz pieczarka gdzieś pod borem spotkała się z muchomorem. Pan muchomor był czerwony i kołnierzem przystrojony. Podała mu dłoń pieczarka. Jaka śliczna z nas jest parka. Tańcowały w lesie grzyby. Bardzo ładną białą polkę. Aż muchomor rozpijany poczuł w boku silną kolkę. <laughs> do you know what that means? Do you remember? Yes, I do. <coughs> what does it mean? It's actually about uh, two mushrooms of different <laughs> names, which I don't even know how to call them in English. And uh, one was sort of a red mushroom with a white color, they dance the polka, and one of the uh, mushrooms uh, almost got drunk just from the dancing, <laughs> <laughs> so drunk, that he started to feel uh, like pains in his uh, side from dancing, <laughs> from being drunk from the dancing. <laughs> That's something they taught you in school? Yeah. Pardon me? They taught you that in school? Well, not the translation. <laughs> the, the, uh, the poem, because it didn't need to be translated. We were all, everyone spoke Polish. Right. <laughs> That's wonderful. So what, so you grew up, now you spoke Polish in your school. Yes. Did you, is that the language that you spoke at home as well? I would say most of the time, sometimes we spoke Jewish, Yiddish. Yiddish? Okay. Because my parents spoke Yiddish, although they also spoke Polish very well, but occasionally we would speak Yiddish. Okay. And uh, when did you learn English? Oh. Not so much <laughs> later. Well, uh, I came to the United States in 1949. I didn't know a word of English. Okay. Not a single word. <laughs> we, they sent us. Well, well it's a story for another day. <laughs> they sent us to Baltimore. Mm -hmm. it, that has nothing to do with my with our being in Baltimore now because mm -hmm. we left Baltimore. Interesting. Uh, after a year, but you see, we had no choice where to go. It was. Uh, Actually, there was a quota from the United States. They let in 100,000 uh, displaced people. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's where we were sent. Okay. I know you probably want to ask something different. Go right ahead. <laughs> it's okay. We'll, we'll talk about that in detail at some point. 
We da I guess we'll just try to stick with the pre-war, even though it's oh, hard. Okay, okay sure. I, but sure. we'd love to hear more next time we meet. Oh, of course. <laughs> Anything you want to ask, please. Oh, do you do you know when Hebrew? You when you were a child, do you know Hebrew? Uh, no, I didn't really know Hebrew. However, after the war, I did learn some. After the liberation. Mm -hmm. I did learn some and I spoke quite a bit, but once I came to the United States and started to learn English, it sort of more or less disappeared. I mm -hmm. still understand some and mm -hmm. can communicate a little bit, but very little. Right. What was it like growing up being Orthodox? What? Um, explain that to me a little bit more, what it means to be Orthodox mm -hmm. and how uh, I'm I'm just not exactly sure what that means. You mean what it was like to grow up in an Orthodox family? Yeah, and yes. Well, you know, it was uh, since this is how we grew up, it was sort of so uh, normal for us, meaning that let's say uh, Friday night when the Sabbath started, mm -hmm. we knew that we couldn't. Uh, let's say, a ride anywhere, or shop, or um, uh, let's say, do any sewing, or any cooking, or, but these things just came so naturally right. to us until uh, Saturday night mm -hmm. ended, which mm -hmm. meant that the Sabbath ended. Mm -hmm. And um, we also ate strictly kosher food, mm -hmm. um, although we did mix with, um, uh, I had some friends that were Gentile, but let's say on Saturday I would only do what I knew I was permitted to do. I would never do things that, uh, let's say, some of the Gentile girls would do. Like what? It, it was, well, let's say they could, uh, on Saturday, let's say, uh, ride, a, ride somewhere or uh, write. We couldn't even write. Mm -hmm. We couldn't, in fact, there was... A, school, but we didn't even go to school on the Sabbath. Uh, what would usually happen, since we missed, always missed Saturday in school, we would usually uh, find out from some of our Gentile friends what took place mm -hmm. and uh, try to write down whatever we missed. <laughs> Yeah. Public school was on Saturday. Yes, Sunday to Saturday, Monday to Saturday. It it's, what? it started Monday uh -huh. and went through Saturday. Okay. There was no school on Sunday. Okay. Did you have a best friend growing up? Yes, but she was a Jewish uh -huh. uh, girl. Uh -huh. We were generally closer to our Jewish friends. And did you live? Um, was your community basically all Orthodox? The community of people you hung out with? or uh, Most of the people, I have to say, in our town, mm -hmm. most of them were Orthodox. Okay. This is not to say all, but most right. people were Orthodox. What was your friend's name, your best friend's name, who was also Jewish? Sprinza. Sprinza? That's pretty. <laughs> Did she, uh, were your families close? Um, my families, they knew one another, but they were not particularly uh, close. Mm -hmm. And you guys, do you have any games you remember playing that were your favorite? Oh yes, we uh, played ball a lot. We had certain games. Uh, what, what's, you played ball? <coughs> Like, uh, what what kind of games? Like, what do you mean by that? Uh, I don't even remember, but somehow 
we played where if you did this or that, you won or lost. Right. But I don't even remember what those games were called. Uh huh. Also, we used to uh, uh, like draw on the ground some like squares mm -hmm. and let's say put a, a little box filled, let's say, with uh, sand. And you had to sort of skip and shove this around at the same time. And again, they were rules when you <laughs> lost and when you won. <laughs> Did you have um, any hobbies in particular that you liked doing, like artwork or...? Uh, well, I liked to uh, do a little bit of sewing. Mm -hmm. uh, we used to try to make uh, our own dolls. Your own dolls? Right. We would like put that together. Mm -hmm. My middle sister was especially good at making those. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes I would help out. Yeah. What and were the... We would make clothes for them, for the dolls. Because you see, things were not av that available to be bought. Right. Uh, in the bigger cities, I imagine that yes, that one could buy uh, toys that readily, but in our town it was not that available. Right. And and so you would sew the clothes and... Right, especially my sister would sew the clothes <laughs> and we would dress the dolls. <laughs> what, were, what were all of your brothers and sisters' names? I don't know if we, wrote, if we got that. Uh, should I... I'll tell you the English names, what we call my sisters now. <laughs> okay, well, even both would be wonderful, what you, okay. what you would call In them. In Poland, my older sister was Jirka. Jirka. However, we call her Irene. Okay. <laughs> and my middle sister was Rachela. We call her Rachelle. Okay. And uh, I had two brothers. And one, we called him uh, Moshe, mm -hmm. you probably heard that name. Mm -hmm. And my younger brother was Shlomo. Shlomo. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Uh, did you and know... Who was the older? I think they were... Um, who, can you say who was the oldest? I know you were oh, the youngest sure, and kind sure. of go through. My, the oldest was Moshe, my okay. brother. After that was my sister Irene, mm -hmm. then was my brother Shlomo, mm -hmm. then was uh, Rachel, mm -hmm. and then I came. <laughs> Did you ever... How much older was how, how old, how much older were you from your oldest brother? Well, I was seven when the war started. I would say you must he? have been maybe nine years older or so. Okay. So he was like 16? Something uh -huh. like it, yes. Do you... Um, or maybe 10, I'm not quite sure. He was a t an older teenager? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, were your siblings, were they allowed to date? They didn't date girls yet, Okay. No, but uh, they had a lot of friends mm -hmm. and uh, friends used to come into our house and they would play games, particularly uh, my brothers liked to play a lot of chess. Chess? Yes, oh. and they were very good at it, particularly I think my younger brother was mm -hmm. like excellent at and, it. And he was, how old was he at the time? Very young, right? Well, he was uh, a few years older than I. I was seven, so maybe he was, uh, let me try to figure, maybe like four years older than I, three, four years older. Uh-huh. <laughs> Did you ever play chess? Uh, no, mm -hmm. I didn't. <laughs> what, um, what... Uh, what did your siblings look like? What characteristics do you guys all mm, feel like you have in common? Unfortunately, I don't have any pictures 
to mm-hmm. show you because nothing survived. Mm-hmm. What did they look like? Uh, my husband will take the telephone. Okay. Uh, <laughs> well, none of us really looked exactly like my parents. We were sort of a mixture. The three sisters, two of my sisters uh, survived. We, there is some resemblance, mm-hmm. but not an awful lot more so I think in the voices than, uh, than physical mm-hmm. resemblance. And my brothers really didn't look alike. One of my brothers, my mother was actually had very dark hair mm-hmm. and sort of almost an olive complexion <coughs> and uh, one of my brothers, I would say, resembled her. On the other hand, my older brother more resembled my father, who was a lot lighter. Mm-hmm. Did. Sort of had a light color, hair, and light, lighter skin. Did your father help you with your schoolwork and uh, kind of... Um, oh, yes. Uh, I didn't particularly need help from my father, but I remember that my older brother and my sister, who was born right after him, they were actually in the same grade. Mm. And the reason my parents did that is because they felt that children actually needed a certain amount of protection and they didn't want them to walk to school by themselves <laughs> and my older brother was an excellent student so was my sister but she didn't have ability in uh, uh, drawing and creating things and my brother did <laughs> so I remember that my father used to create like all kinds of contraptions to uh, be able to help her. Like what? Uh, I remember specifically he once took like a huge (coughs) bowl and put a light bulb in it Uh and a glass on top and of course it shone through and put I think uh, a piece of paper where my uh, sister had to draw a map but I think underneath was my brother's map, and she could trace it from there. Oh, I see. Interesting. So, <laughs> so he created all kinds of uh, things. He was very capable in that. He was an innovator. He liked yes. to do all that. Yes. Wow. It's later on when you'll be asking me things I'll tell you, but actually the three of us survived because of him. Mm. Wow. Wow. Um, Do you know Poland well outside of your town? No, I can't say that because uh, I didn't uh, travel much to the bigger cities. However, uh, my older brothers and sisters occasionally did. Mm -hmm. My father would go on business and would occasionally take one of my sisters or brothers with him, That's just nice. for the fun of it. So you didn't travel very much? No. Except with your mother in the summertime? Except with my mother in the uh-huh. summertime. And then when we went on vacation after that, right. we went for six weeks. Right. Describe what it was like being with your mom, just the two of you guys. Pardon me? Describe what it was like being with your mom, just the two of you. When well, you were I would with her. usually go uh, with her when she took all those beds mm-hmm. and she used to go uh, to one or two physicians and once specifically I remember I had to be in the, I, in the waiting room mm-hmm. while she went in to see her physician and I decided to walk out. Oh no. And surely enough, I didn't know how to get back. <laughs> I was lost. And I remember uh, sort of asking people, I don't even know how I 
found my place back because I'm not sure that I even knew the name of the doctor. <laughs> but I did find my uh, place back. And um, usually uh, when, my mother, when my mother would go to a doctor or take a bath, she would uh, literally beg me. There were places for children <laughs> where you could have all kinds of fun. They were like... Uh, the way I would describe it is like sort of a kiddie land. Mm -hmm. And she would want to leave me there and say you would have a lot more fun. But I never wanted to stay. <laughs> I always wanted to go with my mother. And uh, even though I was with, with my mother, I remember missing my siblings mm -hmm. and my cousins and the rest of the family. And I told that to my mother. And one time I remember she told me, but look, this is such a lively city. They have so many people here. And I said, yes, but all these people are just like ants to me. <laughs> are just like what? Ants. Ants. <laughs> I just wanted to go home. <laughs> what city was this again? Krivica. Krivica. Okay. <laughs> And what what was um, what did your mom look like? Well, she had uh, very dark hair and mm -hmm. kind of a, a almost like an olive skin. Mm -hmm. Actually, one of my daughters, the one in New York, resembles her a little bit. Does she? This sounds beautiful. Mm -hmm. And what about your father? Oh, was he? My yeah. father actually had uh, light hair and light skin. Mm -hmm. Was a tall man. Mm -hmm. And a what, little bit overweight. <laughs> <laughs> what was uh, what was your mom's personality like? Well, she was, I think, very good-natured and uh, charitable. Mm -hmm. She had a pretty voice, and I remember uh, a Saturday uh, when the Sabbath was almost over. Uh, we lived in a house where you sort of had to walk up steps mm -hmm. and we had a balcony okay and i remember her going out uh, on the balcony with me and we used to sing together <laughs> oh, do you remember any songs you sang uh, here and there a few words but not really mm -hmm. and then uh since I heard so many of those songs since then, I'm not even sure exactly which I heard from my mother when and which ones I heard later. Mm -hmm. What um, When you said she's charitable, what kinds of things did she do? Uh, well, uh, but again, that'll take me, that has to take me into the war. Oh, uh, so. all right. I guess we'll <laughs> we'll wait on that. But what was what was the house like that you grew up in? Um, actually, we had uh, let's say the kitchen was uh, very large, probably maybe even larger than this one here, and uh, we had like a. a a very big room, it was called a salon, mm -hmm. but uh, things were arranged differently than here. Here, let's say you have a separate bedroom, right? But in this salon, uh, there were two beds where my parents slept and a huge table with a beautiful uh, rug mm -hmm. underneath where all of us ate. Oh. So, uh, and then another room where my sisters and uh, brothers slept. Okay. So you slept in the same room with your sisters? Sometimes, but there was extra, like an extra bed in this big salon, mm -hmm. sort of like a very big old-fashioned uh, cradle. Uh-huh. That I and I sometimes slept in it. <laughs> Do you remember? Did you like sleeping in it? Yes, I did, especially that it was the same room as my parents, and I liked right. to be in the same room. Yeah. Do you remember what your house smelled like? Well, uh, especially, I guess, 
or even every day when my mother cooked, and mm -hmm. I think she was a good cook, mm -hmm. so usually it would smell from the food uh -huh. that she was making, except that uh, I do remember when if, if cauliflower was uh -huh. cooked, and she used that sometimes, I used to despise it, <laughs> and I, would, I, I, I couldn't stand the smell, <laughs> no. so I would usually leave the house. <laughs> Did you <Because> have... <laughs> incidentally, I like it now. <laughs> really? <laughs> <Eat it>. Yes. <laughs> Did you have a favorite food when you were little? Not really. I was a poor eater. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when I knew that dinner is served, I would try to escape because really? I didn't want to eat. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, we had to go up steps to our house. Mm -hmm. And when you walked down, there was like a little, mm, like a little space, sort of, where you could put in a small chair or a box. So I used to imagine, because I didn't want to eat, that that's where I will live. That I in the will, little box. <laughs> right, in that box or on a chair. But of course, my parents would usually find me and uh, bring me up, and I had to eat something. <laughs> Why didn't you want to eat? I just... You had better I things guess to do. <laughs> I just had a poor appetite, mm -hmm. or... And you liked escaping into this box? Oh, I like to creep in into the box and pretend that that's my little house. <laughs> uh huh. Did you have any other imaginary kind of games that you played that you remember? Mm, well, when I played with my girlfriends, we used to imagine that, uh, uh, let's say, one of us was the patient and one was the doctor. <laughs> so I don't like it. Right. <laughs> That's fun. I remember that. Um, so, in terms of all the holidays that you guys had, mm -hmm. what do you have a memory from any of the holidays that you shared with your family that really stuck out in your mind? Well, uh, like on Rosh Hashanah, mm -hmm. which is the New Year's. So my mother did used to go to the synagogue and, you know, women were uh, set separately from men. There mm -hmm. was what was called the Mechitza. Uh, what is that? Well, a separation okay. that men do not sit together with women. Mm -hmm. The women sat upstairs. So I remember going uh, with her Though I didn't pray, I don't think I knew yet how to uh, how to read Hebrew well enough to pray. But I used to like to go with her and spend some time in the synagogue or play with children, let's say, outside of the synagogue. Some mm -hmm. children sometimes used together mm -hmm. and uh, I would play with them. And we also had help in the house. We had a, uh, a girl who used to help out with some housework. And for my times, she was uh, not Jewish. So oh. sometimes on a Saturday, she would actually take me into church. Really? With her. Yeah. But I don't know if my parents knew. Maybe they didn't object. I'm not sure mm. that I repeated it. I don't remember. Huh. What was or her the, name? Her name I don't remember. Was it an interesting experience going into church with her? I sort of liked it. It was something different and, and I liked it. Uh huh. It was a different experience. Right. How long did she stay with your family? How long she stayed with or, her? Or helped out? Did she help out? She, she helped them? out with some of the housework. Did she live with you? Uh, again, I don't know. Okay. I don't remember her living with us. Okay. So I would so I would assume that she just came and left. Okay. <laughs> she probably left in the evening. Mm -hmm. I would imagine after supper. Mm-hmm. 
Well, um, how much more time do we have? I think we're um, going to take a pause now, take a little break, okay. and uh, change the video camera. I wanted to ask you if you could describe um, a day for me, a typical day maybe in a couple different seasons, but let's just say in the fall or winter, what, what a typical day would be like for you? You mean before the war? Right, when you were very young. Well, a typical day, let's say in the winter, would be, of course I would go to school, come home, uh, usually, I don't remember how many hours school was, how many, or first grade, I don't remember how many hours. Usually, uh, I would eat something and uh, not as a rule cookies and milk because I don't think that I like that my mother would give me something else to eat uh, and I would usually go out uh, let's see if my father didn't take us sleigh riding so I would usually go out with my girlfriends, uh, there was, I would say, like a real mountain, but sort of like a hill, not very far from our house, and I did have a sled, so two of us, I think, would sit down on that, we just like to uh, <laughs> ride down, and there was always a lot of snow you see and ice in the winter time in Poland. That's actually because I should explain that you see cars didn't run. Mm -hmm. There were very few cars in our little town and ice and snow I mean they didn't sold to take it away. Right. It wasn't necessary and since it snowed as often as, as it did cars didn't run, you didn't have to take away the snow. So there was always ice and snow on the ground. So that little hill was always slippery. So we would ride down, walk back up and ride down. It was sort of almost like a typical day. We had fun doing that. Mm -hmm. And in the summer it was different, a typical day. Because once again, I was away with my mother, mm -hmm. and after that we would come straight, uh, we wouldn't even go home, but we would go straight to that house mm -hmm. that my father would usually rent, and, uh, uh, well, we would just have a lot of fun there. And the kind of fun that we had is, I guess, like I mentioned before, uh, the older kids would go uh, swimming, mm -hmm. they would go bike riding, uh, I would go with my mother into the forest, often she would take food out there, because, especially since I had a poor appetite, I tended to eat a lot better when we were on the outside, <laughs> so she would bring food with her. And, uh, there were a lot of places, there were nice places where we could walk around in that forest. The house was like in the forest. And even when you would open a window, the air was mm. terrific. Mm -hmm. So we would uh, go like usually there to a little river, collect flowers, mm -hmm. we would uh, actually braid things from the flowers to wear temporarily, like uh -huh. on our head, uh -huh. to make like a headband out of flowers, or to make a bracelet out of flowers. That's a lot of what we did. Also, her sisters would come to visit mm -hmm. to that place, and they would do a lot of walking. So I went 
did you guys talk about on your walks? Well, that I don't know because you engage the sisters, whatever they talked about, I don't know whether I even listened. On the way, if I would see any flowers, I would collect, or if let's say there would be a uh, gate or something on the way, so I would like to take a stick and sort of I don't even know how you call it. I would like to hear the noise that the stick would make. Uh -huh. I would like roll it on the uh, gate. <laughs> and uh, so this is how I basically occupied my time. Or in the, in the summer, where there would be sometimes like a little hill with grass, so I would like to go up and just roll down yeah. and roll myself down. <laughs> I was actually very active as a child. Very adventurous? Um, yeah, I had, I, I liked adventure, I liked to roll down. I, uh, I was sort of brave, I guess, for a child mm -hmm. my age. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> Do you think that was because you had four older siblings and you knew you had to stand up for yourself? Well, I never exactly thought that I had to stand up for myself. I think my parents kind of treated us equally. Mm -hmm. uh, we hardly ever fought. Hardly. I don't remember... Uh, I guess most of my siblings were that much older that they probably wouldn't fight with me. Occasionally, I would have a little squabble with my middle sister, because she was closest to my age. Uh -huh. She's only two years older than I. But the rest, I guess, they were old enough. We would, they would probably consider me a baby and not, right. not fight with me. What were the kinds of things you and your sister did? Um, it involved some, uh, making some clothes for the dance. <laughs> <laughs> However, once I remember, um, because it was university, I should also mention that a lot of was actually made. Mm -hmm. We would go to a dressmaker dresses or coats actually made to order. Uh, I remember one particular dressmaker, I liked her and she would make my dresses, my coat, my coats. Also shoes for the winter or even summer were made for us and I remember that shoemaker, I even remember his name. What was his name? Zvada. 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 He was a Pole. Uh, well, at one time, my middle sister sort of played a trick on me. <laughs> she had a pair of shoes which I happened to like. And one summer she told me I outgrew those shoes and a strap is broken. You can go ahead and have the strip fixed because I knew how to go to the shoemaker. Mm -hmm have him fix that strip and then you can have the shoes, they don't fit me anymore. Well, I did go and have that strip fixed. <coughs> but then my sister wore the shoes. She <gasps> just tricked me. Um. It, it wasn't that the shoes didn't fit her, she just wanted me to go and get it fixed. Well, I took a knife and cut the strip. Ah! <laughs> so at that time I do remember that my father made me go back to the shoemaker and have the strip, uh, that strap I should say, put back on. He did? Yeah. <laughs> did you have to apologize? Probably. I don't remember, but I do remember that <laughs> he made me go and uh, I think he also 
must have talked to my sister, if I remember my father, but he didn't think that it was right for me to cut that strap again. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys play any other tricks on each other or any other kind of no, I don't brotherly sister thing? Tricks on me, no. I have to say I don't remember. That's good. Did did you play with her the most? Your middle sister, you think? Yeah, when I when I didn't play with my girlfriends, then I played with her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you have any friends who were boys? Um I had some friends, but basically most of the time. Uh, I played uh, with girlfriends. Mm -hmm. However, yes, there were some boys in the crowd that sometimes played with occasionally. Mm -hmm. Did you did you ever play any instrument, or did you like music? I liked to sing, did but you? I played no instruments. Mm. What kind of music did you like to sing? Oh, things that I heard, or sometimes I even made up my own uh -huh. songs and sort of uh, <laughs> sang them. But uh, I didn't write any notes. Do you remember any of the songs? Mm, those that I made up? No. <laughs> <laughs> I made them up, and since I didn't write it down. <laughs> Do you have a favorite song? Do you have a favorite song when you were a child? Favorite lullaby or song? No, not really. I just liked to sing a lot. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's very nice. Uh, sure. I could. Uh, would you mind describing the like what your favorite doll looked like? What, my, what, what your like what the dolls looked like that you made your favorite doll or well it was simply um, we would take some material which we always somehow had in the house and stuff it and it generally had legs and arms and a head and on the head we would usually uh, with a pen we would make the mouth and eyes and nose. <laughs> My sister was very good at it. And then we would uh, dress it. It wasn't exactly uh, a very sophisticated doll, but we did like to play with it. <laughs> <laughs> did you have any toys still from your childhood or any um, anything that you remember that you used to play with that you have now? Or that you like, like? Do you have any other uh, toys that you were fond of besides dolls? Uh, a lot of uh, balls. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. We played ball a lot. Different games was that, and uh, we also used to uh, like. Let's see. We used to make things, which which I guess children don't hear. Out of a box and a string, we would uh, make things uh -huh. and sort of roll around in it. <laughs> or yeah. out of, let's say, we had a lot of cherries in Poland. Mm. So let's say we would like rub those on a stone on both sides until you actually had a hole in it, in, in the pit. Oh, uh huh. It became flat, uh huh, and you would have like a hole. So we would string it up into a necklace oh. or into a bracelet. <laughs> we did things of that nature. <laughs> That's fun. Because I guess there weren't that many toys, so kids, I suppose, used their imagination. Right. Did uh, did you ever sing in school? Not in Poland, no. Okay. I did later on after the liberation. Right. But not in Poland. Um, were you close to your rabbi at your synagogue? At, at your synagogue, were you close, close to your rabbi? 
or do you remember? I remember anything him. him. I remember him, and occasionally, let's say when there would be a question of something is kosher or not. In fact, my mother would send me to him <laughs> with the particular whatever was in question mm -hmm. to ask what it is. Do what you remember any specific examples? Yes. You see, I should explain to you here that let's say when you used a chicken, so uh, because it was a little town, I don't know what it was like in the bigger towns. You see, every Monday in Poland there was like a what they called marketplace where uh, the Gentiles from the villages around, not from our city, but from villages from not too far, mm -hmm. they would bring chickens and turkeys and all kinds of cheeses. So let's say my mother would buy a live chicken, mm -hmm. but that was with the feathers. She had to pull those. She had to do that. Yeah, and she had to uh, clean the chicken. So one time I remember she, when she took out from the uh, inside of the chicken, whatever you take out, because I don't even know what it is, because <laughs> obviously I don't do it these days. There was some fat and a needle was stuck in it. Oh. And my mother didn't know whether that's because of it, whether it's kosher or not. And the rabbi happened to live, there was only one rabbi, and he lived not too far away from us, and she sent me up to his house to ask. And if I recall, it was not kosher, mm -hmm. that we could not use mm -hmm. that chicken. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. things of that nature. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's the only time that I remember uh, going to his house. Uh -huh. Now, I do know that his sons used to come into our house occasionally. Uh -huh. Now, why? I just don't know okay. why they used to come in. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but they hung out with you guys. Maybe they were friends to my brothers, possibly. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you that for sure. <laughs> What other stores were in your town besides the supermarket or the the market that you had um, and the dressmaker? What other places were there? Like, like uh, paint us a picture of your town. Well, like in the upper plaza, they were lower, up an upper and a lower plaza. Mm -hmm. So like in the upper, they were stores where uh, you could go in and buy ice cream and sodas and candies. I mean, these were like our favorite stores. <laughs> and there were quite a few of those. And in addition, uh, Jews owned stores were, uh, let's say you could buy um, like winter rubber shoes that was for sale. Uh, let's say if that's what they sold, so it would be a store where they sold just that, mm -hmm. galoshes and for ladies, rubber shoes. Um, there were stores where you could buy yard goods. Mm -hmm. Like I said, uh, my clothes was made, but you had to buy those yard goods. In fact, one of my uh, aunts, owned such a store. Mm. It was full of different beautiful yard goods oh. that you could buy. So they were all, the, the town was uh, full of stores mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, that the Jews owned and uh, you could buy those things. Or let's say where you could buy like the upper shoes, the, not the sole, but the, how can I explain that? The tops of the shoes? The top of the shoes. You could buy uh, the, uh, um, what do you call it? The, um, the, the leather, 
Okay. Like in a big, let's say, sheet. Right, right, right. The piece of and, leather. And you would have the tops. They were special people mm -hmm. who made those tops mm -hmm. of the shoes. Mm -hmm. And then you went to a shoemaker and he did the rest, the soles. In other words, you didn't go to buy a pair of shoes like here. Right. But all of them had to be made. They were so they were special stores for that. And people that knew how to make those things. Right. Right. Very cool. So there were a lot of stores. Uh -huh. I, I meant to ask you this earlier and I forgot. Um, in the summertime when you went to your uh, house in the forest, how did you guys travel there? What or how did your family get to where you needed to go? By horse and buggy. By horse and buggy. Yeah. Okay. My father had like one of those buggies, which was sort of plain. If he sometimes traveled, then he had to take uh, because he also dealt with. Um, In addition to the flour mill, he had like different seeds mm -hmm. that he dealt with. So it was like a plain buggy, but he also had like a fancy one if he want if we wanted to go somewhere, if he wanted to take the family. It was a lot fancier. Uh huh. And it fit all of you guys in it. It was large. Yeah, it was. I I think. That we could all get into it. <laughs> there were like several seats in it. Um, did your family keep your horses at your house, or did you have no, horses? No. no. We had. Uh, my father had horses for his business, but there was a special place for them, they so were they kept. weren't right. No, they okay. were not in the house. Okay. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> That must have been nice in the winter time, taking the buggy places. Oh yes, oh yes. Going. Did you have different events you went to in town? Well, there weren't so many things going on. We did have movies, but not on a consistent basis. Mm -hmm. Somehow they used to come into town, so whenever there was one, we would go. How was that? Do you remember? Mm -hmm. How was seeing a movie for the first time? Uh, I don't remember my impression of seeing it necessarily the first time because we used to go occasionally. Mm -hmm. So I don't remember the impression of seeing it the first time. Did you have a favorite movie? Actually, I remember seeing only once, it must have been shortly before the war, uh -huh. since I remember it. What was it? It was, um, somehow described the, uh, the exodus of, uh, the Jews from Egypt. Huh. And you and you you remember this movie, yeah. well? I not that I remember it well, but I remember the title, and mm -hmm. I kind of remember that I went to that. Mm -hmm. Um. In terms of where you went to school, do you remember what you studied? Well, I was only in first grade. Mm -hmm. Actually, for whatever reason, at seven. I should have all I should have already been in second grade. Okay. But somehow I was sort of a little sickly and not mature mm -hmm. enough and that's why I started a little bit later than I should have started. Mm -hmm. So simply we were learning a little bit of arithmetic and spelling and I remember uh, like trying to uh, uh, like write mama, mm -hmm. just like some very simple words because it was just the first grade and I had not gone 
to a preschool, okay. like my sister did, like my middle sister, for example, started school at five. Mm. She wasn't even supposed to, to, supposed to start that young. But again, my mother wanted her to go with my brother, mm. with my brother who was older mm -hmm. than she was, about two years older. So she actually started early and she had gone to a preschool, mm -hmm. whereas I did not. So in first grade I was like learning very simple things and at one time I uh, even cried in first grade and my uh, sister, my middle sister, was in the same building so they called her in oh. <laughs> to sort of calm me down but uh, basically I was fairly happy most of the time in school. Why were you crying? I don't remember why mm -hmm. I was crying. Maybe I couldn't do something. I don't remember mm -hmm. why. And um, you, so your mom didn't say that you had to go to preschool? No, they didn't send me for the reason that I explained that I was sort of very slim, a little bit, not really sick, but a little bit caught colds more often than my siblings mm -hmm. and uh, that's why my mother felt it would be better for me to start a little bit later. Now when you were born, I know this is going back, but uh, were you born, did they have a hospital in your town that you were born at? Or, or a doc place where you, were you born you know, at home? Or? You know, someone asked me that recently, uh -huh. and I'm not sure. Okay. I am not sure if there was some hospital, or if simply a birth took place at home. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Did you? Were you born on time? In terms of, like, did your mother go through her full? Yeah, I was born after nine months, mm -hmm. yeah. So do you feel, I wonder, um, what do you mean by you felt kind of like, or you were a little bit sickly, what, what did you mean by that? I was just wondering if it related to your birth in any way. No, it wasn't related to my birth. I would, for example, get a cold very often and cough very harshly. And at times my parents would take me to the doctor, either in Bozentin, or take me to Kelce, to a doctor. Mm -hmm. Somehow my siblings were healthier. Mm -hmm. And because of it, that's how she felt. I don't know if, <laughs> if that was a good excuse. But <laughs> Do you have any memory of what it was like to be sick? Or um, did you ever get more sick than a cold when you were younger? Mm, I do remember having the measles, uh -huh. um, and I was quite sick, mm -hmm. but I got well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, don't forget, I don't remember being really sick except in the concentration camp. Uh -huh. did, um, did you have any pets? Any animals? Yeah, yes. <laughs> we had a cat. A cat? What was the cat's name? I don't remember. We had a cat that my mother always sort of had to watch because my siblings always wanted to overfeed it. <laughs> to overfeed it? <laughs> as long as my mother was around, it was okay. <laughs> My mother gave specific instructions when she went to me, with me to Krinitsa, not to overfeed it, how often to feed it, when to feed it, how to feed it. It didn't work. <laughs> By the time we came home, the cat was unfortunately dead. <gasps> because because he ate too much. My they over was <laughs> overfed. That was always the tendency. When my mother watched it, it was okay. She didn't let. Oh, no. So she went away. 
Did that happen with any other animals you had? No, I don't remember. We never had a dog. I don't remember. Uh huh. The only, the only pet we had is a cat. How long did you have the cat for? Before it. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> sure of that did a did you have a favorite animal um, outside in the wilderness, maybe, or an animal that uh, I don't know what kind of what kind of animals did they have growing up around here where you were? They had in the city. They had dogs and mm -hmm. cats, no other animals. But uh, I like both. Cats and dogs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um. <laughs> um. Did your parents ever tell you stories about? Yeah, like um, before bed, any stories? Oh, yes. They Do did. you remember any of them? I definitely did. I don't exactly remember the stories. I do remember, for example, uh, waking up one night. I was in my parents' room, and they were, and it was dark. Mm -hmm. They kept it dark, and there were some tall life plants. My mother kept some tall life plants in that room and I imagined that these were people. Oh. I was very young and I was <laughs> very afraid and I remember waking up my father and he had a very hard time convincing me that these are just plants <laughs> that all I'm seeing is plants like shadows of plants. I think he turned some lights on and took me and showed me, you see this is what you're seeing. These are not people, nobody mm -hmm. came in here, you know, I remember that. And of course my parents were old enough that they survived the First World War. Mm. So sometimes they would tell us things about uh, the First World War, which I hardly remember. And uh, the Germans were not at all in the First World War, like in the Second World War. Mm -hmm. My mother had pretty good memories of them. It's the Cossacks who were, uh, who they were afraid of in bed. And I guess that's one of the reasons that my mother didn't want to escape from Poland. Mm -hmm. She thought that maybe the Germans will be like during the First World War. Well, mm -hmm. that was... Not at all the case. Mm -hmm. My father had actually a pretty good imagination. He sort of imagined a lot of what will happen. Mm -hmm. And he would have escaped when there was still time. Mm -hmm. And by the time the Germans came in and he wanted to escape, it was too late. Mm -hmm. He couldn't make it. But, uh, what was their experience like in the First World War? Did your father fight in the First World War? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. Where were they living at the time when that happened? Mm, they were living in the same part of Poland, mm -hmm. but it might have belonged to Russia. Mm -hmm. This is something historically that my husband incidentally could take, tell you better mm -hmm. than I can because I'm not that well versed what I know. In fact, I think Poland became an independent country only after the First World War. Mm -hmm. Before that, I think it belonged to uh, Austria, mm -hmm. Hungary, Russia and it only became independent after the First World War. Then my parents had, at that time, they had good experiences. The Germans were more or less decent. Mm -hmm. So, 
Ex explain a little more to me about their fear from the from World War One. What? How did that affect them? How World War One affected them? Mm -hmm. To tell you the truth, I don't exactly know mm -hmm. because the little bit that they told us, I don't remember enough to repeat. Mm -hmm. Did to tell you that. Obviously, I was not born. Right. You right. Right. I was born in '31. Right. Do um, did they experience any anti-Semitism? Um, do you remember when you were young, your parents? If my parents experienced any, any, I don't remember them particularly repeating stories of anti-Semitism. But here and there, I know that adults did experience some anti-Semitism. Did you know of any stories that were in your community? That occasionally boys would get beat up, especially boys, mm -hmm. by, by other Gentile young fellows, even going to school. Mm -hmm. They would get beat up. Yeah. Because I heard these. Especially, they would attack boys. Why is that? Just because... I guess boys are generally more active. Mm -hmm. And maybe there was this idea that uh, they'll be able to defend themselves better, they'll be able to have a better fight. Mm -hmm. I don't really know. Mm -hmm. Did you... Uh did you dress in a certain way? Um, oh, right, with the... Yeah, I yeah, remember, but... but dress, you know, my parents were fairly well to do. Right, right, right. Dress pretty nicely. You're going? Okay. Okay. Are you all right continuing a little longer? Pardon me? Are you all right continuing a little longer? Yeah, it's okay. Oh, it's fine. <laughs> um... Yeah, so in, in terms of the town, what um, what other aspects of it do you remember in terms of smell or um, sight or just kind of what... In terms of home? Yeah, and, and the town, the town that was your home as well. Wait, I just want to make sure that... Shalom, can you get out? Or is the car? Can you stop the video? Yeah, I have to do that. Hold on one second, I'm walking right Is the car parked right? Is the door from the. the um, I just want to make sure because I don't want. Okay, so you're, okay, so you're going to explain to me. Okay, as, uh, tell me what you were asking. Sure, uh, a little more about your town in terms of anything else you remember. Um, the smells, the way it made you feel. Um. Uh, actually, I was very secure. Mm -hmm. I should also mention that in our town, um, sometimes, I, I told you we used to like go out of the gate from the mill and be uh, like, on farms or meadows, mm -hmm. but right in the town there was also like a very old, the ruins sort of like of a very old castle, mm -hmm. but it wasn't completely ruined, a lot of the walls were still standing and the grounds there were very beautiful, there was a river close to it and a meadow and uh, there was a photographer, so especially on Saturday a lot of people used to go there, mm -hmm. and uh, they were like, at one time, I remember, there was like a big, um, out of hay, a big, uh, like, what do you call that, the, um, like almost like a mountain of hay, uh -huh. where kids would go up and climb down. Oh, right. So, Sometimes on Saturday we used to go there and my parents, as far as I remember, did permit the one who was a photographer and he kind of lived, he had a house 
very close there mm -hmm. to this castle. Uh, my parents did permit uh, him to take pictures of us, so we had a lot of pictures taken of ourselves and our cousins, girlfriends, and <laughs> a lot of people used to come there. And uh, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> sounds like that's, a lot of fun. When you asked about the city, that's one thing I remember about uh, one of the things. What did the castle look like? Was it, was it stone? Stone. Uh-huh. Right. And you could go in through it? And yes. There were like a lot of rooms you could go through and uh, it, it was a lot of fun to go in there. Uh -huh. But at night people used to say uh, that, oh, don't go in there, it's too scary. Uh -huh. <laughs> so we never went there at night. Right. <laughs> were there, um, do you remember any other places that kind of creeped you out since you were so young, like any places that you were kind of scared to go to in your town? No, not really. That's very because nice. I really used to roam around and not be afraid. <laughs> so you felt really secure? Yes. Yes, I really did. Mm -hmm. And um, where Describe like uh, where your school was in relation to your home and how, okay. like, like when you went to school, how was that and okay. how was it in town? They were, uh, like the two main things in our town were like two plazas. Mm -hmm. One was called the lower plaza and the upper, and the upper plaza and they both had schools. And when you... Two, two buildings. Now, when I was very little, it seems, as far as I remember, I went to the school in the lower plaza, uh -huh. and that was very close from my house. I doubt that it was more than two or three blocks. Mm -hmm. And also in the lower plaza, close to that school, um, there was a... Um, Mm, I forget the words, unfortunately. <laughs> Sorry. A well. Uh huh. Where uh, the way, incidentally, that we took water, you didn't open the faucet like here. You had to uh, crank. There was a well, and you had to crank up the water into a bucket mm -hmm. and brought it home. So uh, uh, there were people, they did that for a living, who actually carried water and From we had world. someone he had like two buckets that he would he, he carried it there was something like on his shoulders mm. i don't remember what that was called and on it were hanging two buckets mm -hmm. and he would bring two buckets of water and there was like a big like a um, like a white barrel, it was the same material, let's say, as this refrigerator. Mm -hmm. And he would pour it in there. Mm -hmm. And he would bring a few of those until the barrel, un until the, right, until the barrel was full. And that uh, well was very close to the school. Mm -hmm. And it was very close to our house. Now, the upper plaza was a little bit further from our school. Okay. And as people went to the upper grades, more or less, there was no high school as far as I remember. Mm -hmm. But starting maybe from, I don't know, fourth grade, people went uh, to the upper school, the mm -hmm. upper plaza. Mm -hmm. And... Um how were the two plazas divided? Like, was the upper one... These were two separate buildings, and how close were they to each other? Well, in the middle, there were, like, some streets uh -huh. and some stores. In other words, it was sort of a little bit of a walk from the lower to the upper plaza, mm -hmm. as far as I remember. Mm -hmm. 
And can you just describe what the plaza looked like? Was there a park in the center? Or what, when you say plaza... No, there you... was no park in the center, but they were, we called it a plaza because it was less sort of like a square, mm -hmm. a big square. Mm -hmm. And did your family get well water as well from, uh, from this well? Yes. Did the entire we, town or were there more? Actually, we had water in the house, but it wasn't exactly in the house. We had like a hall. Mm -hmm. And when you went into the hall, we could draw water. We had running water, but only cold water. Mm. So we also needed water in the house, and that's why he brought this water to us. And that's, I believe, how the whole town got their water. So when you bathed, do you heat up the water and then, and then put it in the tub and then... Correct. So it was a longer process? Yes, it was a longer process. Uh -huh. And for that matter, washing clothes was a mm. long process. Mm -hmm. There were no washing machines. Mm -hmm. <laughs> how did you guys, I'm curious, communicate with each other from one family to another? Like, did you... Uh, if or did you have did you have um, like if you wanted to communicate with your grandfather did you guys just go there or did you have a way where you sent okay. letters and since my grandfather had a business and my father had mm -hmm. a business and my grandfather in addition to the to the mill that he had he also owned a uh, like a hardware store mm -hmm. but it was different than a hardware store here because they were selling strictly uh, only like iron things, metal sheets. You couldn't buy like small things. It was almost like a wholesale. So since he had that, he also had a very big apartment and a telephone. Mm. But only businesses had telephones. Like for example, in our house, there was no telephone. Mm. So when we wanted to see our grandfather, we simply went there. Right. It was close, and we went there. Mm -hmm. And then your father had the business, so he could call someone if he needed to. Yes. If he had to call another business, yes. Mm -hmm. He would call from my grandfather's house. Mm -hmm. How did he get started in doing flour mill, um, having a flour mill? I believe that I think it kind of belonged to someone in the family before that. And then uh, uh, my grandfather and my father's father owned most, most of it. But when my mother got married, uh, my father's father gave the share that he owned uh -huh. as a gift to him oh. because he didn't need it. Oh. Very nice. And so that my father ended up owing fifty percent of it. <laughs> so your wait, okay, sorry. So your mother's father and your father's father were in business together. No. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> sorry. Did I explain that, or should I explain that again? Your, fa so, your, your father got 50% of the mill. Okay, but he only had 50% after he was married. Okay. Because my father's mm -hmm. father owned, and maybe at first they were in business together, I'm not even sure. Mm -hmm. Because my father's father, you see, owned a lot of it. Mm -hmm. But when my father got married, my father's father, meaning my grandfather, mm -hmm. didn't need it anymore. Right. He was by then elderly mm -hmm. and he had another business. Right. And my father was the only child, the only son. They never had any more children. Mm -hmm. So he just gave it to him. Mm -hmm. how, old, how old were your parents when they met? My parents were very young when they met. How old? I think about 19. Mm -hmm. How old were you when you met your husband? I was, I just, I just... Uh, when 
we were married, my husband and I was 22 and a half. Okay. okay. Um, so, your father ran this mill. My father and my grandfather mm. owned it, but as I said, my grandfather never came in. Mm -hmm. He didn't come into the business. He uh, was a very religious man and did a lot of learning, did a lot of studying, so that he did not come into the business. Mm. But they were hired men that worked. A lot of these were Gentiles mm -hmm. that were hired by my father mm -hmm. and by one of my uncles who worked in the mill. Right. What, can you describe your grandfather a little more? What do you mean he was very religious? What did he... You mean my grandfather? Mm -hmm. He was then considered sort of elderly, though he wasn't even 60. Okay. I don't think. But uh, he was very orthodox. Mm -hmm. More so than my father or than my uncles. Mm -hmm. So a lot of his time he spent sitting and learning. Mm -hmm. Did he uh, teach you at all? Um, or uh, I think he probably taught some of his uh, children, but I was just a young grandchild. Mm -hmm. so no. mm -hmm. But uh, at the same time, uh, he was uh, very aware of things and uh, when people used to gather at his house, then he sat with all of us and talked and mm. often discussed politics and mm -hmm. uh, was quite aware of things, mm -hmm. even though the rest of his time he uh, sat a lot studied and learned. Mm -hmm. well, and so your father must, was your father the same way? My father was orthodox, but uh, my father was busy in the business mm -hmm. and occasionally, yes, he would learn, but it was on occasion and on Saturday he did mm -hmm. and he would go to the synagogue, but he did not uh, spend as much time sitting and learning as my grandfather mm -hmm. did. Did your older brothers and sisters have bar and bat mitzvahs? I'm sorry? Did your older siblings have bar and bat mitzvahs? Yes, they did, but a bar or bas mitzvah was not like it is here. Mm -hmm. Here, as How you know, it? it's like uh, almost like a party. Mm -hmm. It's uh, very much celebrated. But really, in Orthodox Judaism, one is actually bar mitzvah. You automatically become bar mitzvah when you get to be 13. Mm -hmm. Even if nothing is done, you are bar mitzvah when mm -hmm. you are 13. And so they did go to synagogue uh, to uh, um, uh, recite a little bit from the Torah and they usually some sweets were served and mm -hmm. some uh, wine and maybe whiskey, but that's about all that was done. Okay. That was the style. Did you, when were you, did you go to um, synagogue on the weekends and were you, how old do you start preparing to have a bar mitzvah? Boys <laughs> probably, you see, uh, the boys, uh, went to a public school just the way I did. My mm -hmm. brothers went to public school, but after public school they went to what's called a cheder. Mm -hmm. And a cheder was sort of like a religious school. Okay. A very religious school, mm -hmm. in fact, I should say. So probably they were preparing probably for a very young age. Mm -hmm not only to become bar mitzvah, but generally learning. Right, right. Do you remember going to any weddings? Um, or, other or other kind of events or celebrations in your time? I don't, but uh, 
definitely uh, my older sister. I remember when one of my uncles, my mother's brother, got married in a big city called Krakow. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where his bride came from and that's where the wedding took place and my parents went to that wedding and definitely my older sister went mm -hmm. with them. Okay. And you were at home with your brother? and did, right. did and I remained at home with my siblings. your older brothers and sisters kind of watch over you and babysit you since you were the youngest? Uh, yes, they did, but usually there would be, I think, someone left in the house, like a woman that was paid. That, uh, like the girl who was... Uh, Pardon me? Like the girl you had spoken about earlier who took you to church occasionally? Right, so somebody would be left to uh, mm -hmm. like take care of all of us. And you said that your parents, you're not sure if your parents knew that she wasn't Jewish? This woman? No, no, no. this one my parents knew. Oh. That at one time, my sisters tell me there was someone in our house who was Jewish. I do not remember her. Mm -hmm. And she used to definitely sleep in our house, but my parents eventually uh, married her off. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, it was kind of in Jewish law it's considered like a good deed to introduce someone to someone else uh -huh. to possibly marry them off. Huh. Oh. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I have one more question. I know this is sure. kind of a odd question, but I, as being a little child, I remember my dreams a lot being little and like do you have well two questions one do you know what you wanted to be when you grew up when you were little no i didn't think about it then because i was only seven years old mm -hmm. when the war broke out and once the war broke out once we'll talk about it then i'll tell you about it there was no time to think about anything else but how to survive mm -hmm. from one day to the other. Mm -hmm. Do you remember uh, any dreams you had? Any nightmares or as or a child? I don't, yeah, any kind of no. Unfortunately, I still have nightmares, but that's oh. has to do with the camp. Mm -hmm. Well, is there anything else you'd like to share with us about being a little girl and growing up in this town? think of anything at the moment unless you sort of ask a lot of questions <laughs> if there is anything else to ask then please ask um, but I really don't remember at the moment okay uh, do you guys have any questions other questions you'd like to ask I think we've got any. <laughs> yeah, you thank you <laughs>